Hello and welcome everyone, Dougie O'Brien here, and I returned with another Astroneer automation guide. So this is an update on my scrap to aluminum alloy production line. The first one was pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie, it was not fully automated, there were a lot of bottlenecks, you had to interact with items. When this one is fully automated, and I'm gonna go over it, I went into creative mode and I spent a couple of hours trying to figure things out. So as you can see here, I pretty much made things symmetrical as much as possible. It's not fully symmetrical, but it looks much more elegant and refined than my previous build. I don't think most people care, but I have a little bit of OCD when it comes to playing games. <laughs> Anyways, why don't we dive into it? It's a little bit of a bug happening with this trade platform. I'm going to have to fix that later. All right, here's the first step. So you're going to have this area right here. So you don't have to use these uh, circular platforms. In fact, it would be a lot cheaper if you didn't. You can use individual platforms for, for these arms. Uh, it would be optimal to do that because you can angle them any way you want. And then these trade platforms don't even need platforms. They don't have to be powered at all. And the only really large platforms you would want are the extra large platform C for the smelting furnaces here, over here, and the chem labs here. However, you can make do with smaller platforms if you use arms to kind of ferry materials back and forth. It's not ideal, but you can do whatever uh, you would like depending on how much materials you have available. So the first step again is to have these areas set up here. These arms will pick it up. Pick up the scrap, all you have to do is put your scrap down here. They'll dump it into this medium resource canister which holds 32. And then I have a storage sensor set on the canister set to full or empty. And I'm going to have to split it between everything here. I use all 12 segments on one on each of these three arms that load the scrap. And this one's not working. All right. Yeah, there's some weird weird bugs that I'm kind of encountering. Uh, and then, onto these three arms that load the scrap from the canister into, on, or onto the trade platforms. And then I have it set onto the trade platforms themselves. And then I also have it set on the resource canister itself. There's a, I think, a bug happening here. I'll have to check that out later. Put that scrap on there last. Okay. Anyways, so this is... It, well, it was working. I'm going to have to troubleshoot it later. But basically what happens is I have 8 scrap per trade platform. That's 32. And then I preload these arms with three, 1 scrap each. So that, you know, it dumps in 32 here, these will transfer it, and because of the 3 scrap extra that I put in, the sensor will activate when it's empty as soon as the last scrap is on one of these arms. I set it that way because if you don't have the extra scrap, basically what will happen as soon as the last scrap is off, if you have exactly 32, one of these trade platforms will have one slot missing because the scrap will be on the arm. So now you're, you're going to have like an uneven amount of materials dropping down and you know that may cause problems later. I want all, everything to be as symmetrical as possible to reduce problems. Now a couple of things, you're going to need a lot of RTGs to power this. You know, you don't need this many but you know I have about six right here. And I have these lights, you don't have to put lights, you can put anything on these slots. Basically they're filling up the empty storage spaces so it does not load or pull anything off uh, it's going to happen because if you look at the arms the area that which it grabs materials from and deposits to is fairly uh fairly generous so that's why i have the lights on here to illuminate the space but you can just fill it with whatever you want as long as an arm won't grab it also another thing to note here make sure to filter what the arms grab by putting in the item that you want the arm to grab on the slot right here. So I have it grabbing only one thing most of the time for these production lines. Otherwise, it will just grab multiple things and just literally anything. And that will kind of ruin things. So I have all of these arms filtered. 
again these are just to fill spaces these platforms are here to kind of split the power all right so as soon as the train platforms come down these arms will start grabbing the raw metals off so this is malachite and this is laterite on this side there's some inconsistencies with the build right now i'm gonna have to figure out later it was working I, I swear to god it was working before i load the safe hole. anyways it's fine because it's still working for the most part just not as efficiently and then when it grabs these raw metals it'll drop it into these temporary storage slots and then these arms will grab it and dump it into kind of like the buffer here and then this arm will grab it and dump it into these storage units here which are connected to the smelting furnaces and then it will refine the metals into copper and aluminum and then finally these arms are set to grab you know aluminum and copper only and it'll dump it into these buffers here and the chem labs will take that and turn it into aluminum alloy so these oh these are full already my goodness if i can kind of uh all right There we go. Now it will load the canisters. One thing to note here, uh, it's possible as you see here that the bottleneck here for this production line are the chem labs. There's not enough chem labs. I need more. And you will have a buildup of access refined metals. Now this probably won't happen due to the fact that it requires a lot of scrap. Uh, and most people won't have that much if you do. Just make sure you fix that by aligning the arms just so, so that it will be in reach of the material coming out of the chem lab. In that way, if these cells are full and it can't output the finished product, the arm will just grab it straight from the chem lab and dump it into the re resource canister. Now the, this here is supposed to simulate the fact that the axle request platform is on here and the resource canister is on top of the rocket. As soon as it detects the canister being full, it should launch the EXO request platform and send it up into space and come back down empty. Now there's a little bit of an issue here. I don't know what happens if, you know, you launch the storage sensor into space. What happens to the tethers? I'm going to test it out later. Uh, also, like, it's a little bit inefficient in that it only detects the storage canister. So there are eight slots on the rocket itself. You're kind of losing a little bit of byte efficiency per payload, but that's okay considering the fact it's fully automated. All right, there you have it, folks. Uh, that was my production line. I'm going to debug this later. Uh, but for the most part, it, it works pretty well. Again, it's really expensive due to the platforms I'm using. But you can make it a lot cheaper by only using the smallest platforms. Uh, that way, you know, the little two slotters for the arms, no platforms for the trade platforms because they, they don't need it. They don't need power. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. And you can use smaller platforms for the furnaces if you use arms to transfer materials back and forth, which is a little bit inconvenient. But there you have it, folks. My fully automated scrap to aluminum production line now the only thing missing and this is the thing that i'm working on next is a fully automated soil conversion production line but there's a few key missing elements that prevent it from being fully automated for example i convert soil into medium wind turbines and for that to be fully automated i need some way to unpackage the wind turbines and then feed them into a shredder so right now i can't really do that I'm going to see if there's a better way to do this, <laughs> but I'm working on it. And uh, there's really no way to automate soil gathering. So, you know, these are kind of things to think about and figure out for my production line. But if I can figure it out, I have will have created a system that can convert soil into any material of your choice. Now, I'm going to need some logic. Again, I wish there was a way to kind of push a button and have it toggle states for the chem lab to switch materials. And then, you know, I, you would have to toggle states for the arms as well. I'm... It's, uh, it's uh, gonna be daunting, but we'll, we'll figure this out together. <laughs>
Anyways, there you have it, folks. My production line. I think it looks pretty... Pretty okay, all things considered. Alright. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. Again, this is just a rough temporary guide because the automation update is new. And, you know, there are a lot of new components coming out. There might be better ways to do this. So I'm always working on improving my production lines. And once I feel like I have finalized a guide, then I'll produce a more well-produced video with the script and all of the numbers like all of the costs involved so that you guys can get a firm grasp of, you know, what it's going to cost to build the production production line and run it. Anyways, once again, thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, things you'd like to see or for me to cover, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there and catch you guys next time.